Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Vicious coming at you with some tech tutorials today. I just picked up one of these HP touchpads in the latest fire sale. So got myself the 32 gigabyte version for 150 and there were a lot of people that got them. Also there was the 16 gigabyte version for $99. So I figure this huge influx of purchases for the HP touchpad probably is going to have some people out there looking for the same information I was just a couple of days ago, which is going to be the best way to encode videos for your HP touchpad so that you can watch any movie you'd like on the default player that comes installed on the web OS operating system with no lag and high quality. Let me tell you a few reasons why you might want to do this. First of all, you don't want to pay for a program. You want to use the one that's built in. Second of all, you want to make sure that, you know, you're going to be getting proper play quality for no, no lag. You can skip around the movie with no problems. Another great thing is the size restrictions. I'm going to be using Fast5 today as an example. It's got a 6.53 gigabyte file here for the entire movie. After I encoded it with some really crazy high settings, I reduced that all the way down to 1.56 gigabytes. You can imagine that almost 7 gigabytes for a movie that you would use up all your touchpads memory in just a few movies, even if you had the 32 gigabyte version. So if you're planning on keeping a movie on there for collection sake, which I do, I'm using my touchpad as a portable media device, then going ahead and re-encoding your videos is worth the time and effort. It'll make it easier and faster to transfer it over and it's gonna make everything smooth. So introductions aside, let's get to how to do. So the program I use to encode all my videos, including all my YouTube videos, is MeGUI. It's a really great free encoding tool that can do just about everything. It's a very complicated looking thing, but we're not gonna use nearly all the options that it has. I'm just gonna show you the bare minimum of what you'll need to know. So the first thing you'll need to know is to download it. You can get it at the SourceForge. Here is the URL, sourceforge.net slash projects slash me GUI. Once you've downloaded it and installed it, it will pretty much download and install all of the different programs that it uses for you automatically. So it uses, you know, a lot of really great programs inside. This is just a graphic user interface to let you use all these different programs. The main things here, X264 is a really great H264 video codec and encoder. I should say encoder, the codec is H264. MP4 box is a great moxer and demoxer for the MP4 format, which we'll be using. Nero AAC is a really great AAC audio encoder. And um, so definitely, you know, just know that this is a pretty awesome tool. Nero AAC, the codec I was just mentioning for audio, you need to go download this yourself from nero.com slash English slash download dash Nero digital dash Nero dash AAC dash codec period PHP, or simply go to Google and type in Nero AAC and it's probably going to be your very first search result. The reason for this is while Nero does distribute this codec free for everybody to use, it is not um, available to be packaged with another program. It has to be downloaded from their site just due to usage rights. So the people who make MeGUI cannot include it and have it automatically download it for you. You will have to download it and then once you've done so, go to your settings and go to external program settings and set the directory path for your Nero AAC encoder EXE. Once you've done that, the housekeeping is done, then we can actually start to learn how to encode. So I'll close this, close this, and I'm uploading a video right now. Okay, so now let's get down to business. Here's what you need to know about your HP touchpad. The resolution of the screen is 1024 pixels across and 768 pixels across the shorter way. I should say, I was gonna say up and down, but you can use it in any orientation. So while in landscape mode, which is generally the mode you'll be watching a movie in, 1024 across, 768 down. It supports the MP4 format, also known as the container for your video files. And it likes to support the H.264 video codec and the AAC audio codec. So for your settings here, what you're gonna to need to do for your encoder settings, go to configuration. 
you're going to change this to constant quality, I recommend. Set it between 20 and 30. The lower the number, the higher the quality, but the larger the file size. 20 is really overkill. That's what I use to encode the Fast Five movie, but it really is overkill for most people. I recommend 24 to 28. The touchpad does support the high profile. For the AVC level, this is going to be some automatic restrictions that the encoder applies to the video. That way it knows uh, the device can handle it. It doesn't use any of these more advanced features that the codec can uh, actually use on a higher profile device. So go ahead and set that to 3.1. Once you've done that, if you want to, you can save this as a preset and I did I went ahead and saved it as my HT HP touchpad preset so I don't have to set this every single time I can just simply choose that preset and it'll have it all pop up for me okay now I'm going to start the complicated part I guess you would call it here's the part where you have to actually start encoding your video you're going to need to go to tools AVS script creator because this program uses AVI, AVI synth. <laughs> I don't know how you say the AVI synth as its a uh, mechanism to feed the videos to the encoder. Go to video input and browse to where you have your movie at. And it's going to pop up showing you a preview of what your movie looks like currently right now. You can just minimize it or close it your choice. We're going to resize this video to 1024 as the width and then just click on suggested resolution mod 16 and it's going to automatically calculate the closest resolution to match your width on the proper aspect ratio. If you want to see what the movie looks like now you can click on apply to auto preview and there you go. That's what your movie looks like now after it's been resized. Over on the filter side for the source type, I know this movie is progressive. However, what I would suggest you do is go ahead and click on Analyze. And I'm probably going to skip ahead in time here on the video so you don't have to watch this analyze process. But what the program is doing right now is it's actually, actually analyzing your video footage to determine if it's interlaced, film, progressive, and if it is interlaced, what it will do is it will apply a deinterlacing filter for you. So that way your movie will look a ton better than it would if it was been played in interlace mode. As a matter of fact, I can just abort that. I already know it's progressive. There we go. Noise filter, I recommend you turn this on. This is going to apply a filter to the movie that's going to remove like little dots of unnecessary uh, noise grain to the movie that you can't notice you will not be able to see the difference with this filter run or not but what it will do is reduce the size of your movie because there's less color information there for the movie to have to save if the movie is in the wrong color profile for this filter to work it'll give you an error and if you happen to run into that error just come back to this step and turn it off so we'll save that now Okay, on save, close, and load to be encoded. There we go. So there you go. This is what your movie looks like after all your filters. And it's going to load it into the input for you. What you need to do is set the file format to MP4. I always personally use MKV for anything, but just for the touchpad, we have to use MP4. And then you want to set your video output. If you have more than one hard drive and you have the space available, I would actually go ahead and save it to a different hard drive than where your source is. It'll help speed up the process. So you go to where you want to put it, name it what you want to name it, and then I'll just go ahead and name it Fast 5 Video Encode. Then you want to click on Q. For the audio input, you just go to where your source movie is again. Click on your movie and do the same thing. Set the audio output. Go ahead and put this on D drive where I had it. 
and I'll call this fast five audio and code. Let me show you the settings we use for this. For the encoder, we're going to use Nero AAC extension. It can be MP4 or M4A. I just like to use M4A because it lets me know that it's an audio file, not a video file. For configuration here, I'm going to use NIC audio for the decoder. For channels, we'll go ahead and down mix it to stereo because the touchpad does not have anything other than stereo. For the sample rate, keep that at original. These are up to you. Dynamic range compression kind of brings the highs, the, the loudest parts of the movie and the quietest parts of the movie to a similar noise level. So if you have one of those movies where an explosion is going off and it's so loud that it makes the rest of the movie seem quiet. So then when they start talking, suddenly you can't hear them talk without cranking up the volume and then something explodes again and it's way too loud. Uh, this is actually really awesome to fix that for you. It's going to bring everything closer to the same volume. I would say I would actually recommend using this option for the touchpad because when you're out and listening to this on a tablet, it's not like the speakers are large enough to really take advantage of that theater quality sound where you have some things very loud. Normalized peaks just means that if whoever made this movie on the original, you know, the source, if they didn't encode the audio so that it uses the full spectrum of sound that it can use, it'll raise it up to the highest level of sound. So always turn this one on. As far as bit rates, I use an adaptive bit rate at 130. And basically think of AAC as twice as effective as MP3. Everyone knows that MP3 at like 128 KB totally sucks, but an MP3 at 256 is pretty good. AAC is about twice the quality, so 130 KB is equal to about 260 KB's worth of quality for an MP3, and it would also use up half the space. So there we go, that's our settings. We go ahead and queue that up, and now we're going to go into the queue, and you can see that we have an X264 encoding waiting, and a Nero AAC encoding waiting, and once you hit start, it's going to encode these two video files or two files for you and I'm going to go ahead and start this and then come back in a second with what you're going to have okay everyone I'm back to finish up the tutorial the video encoding portion is done and right now as I am recording the audio portion of the encoding is taking place and it won't take too long. I just wanted to cover, cover one base that I, I want to mention to you guys. I've encoded so many movies and videos throughout the last many years and one out of 100 encodings sometimes I get an audio encoding failure. And I just want to show you a real quick trick to get around that without having to worry about using any other programs. If you ever get your audio encoding to fail and and it'll tell you on the log, you know, you had audio encoding fail and on your queue, you'll have a big red X and it'll say it failed for whatever reason. Instead of feeding the, the movie file directly into the audio encoder portion here, go ahead and go to where you had your file stored and you're going to find the AVS script that MeGUI created for you when you did the video encoding. This is just a text file. Go ahead and open it up with any of your text editors. Mine opens up with Notepad. And I want you to find where you had the audio at. In this case, this one's got audio in it already. Good. Sometimes you'll see something that says audio equals false, especially if it loads with direct show source instead of the uh, FF video source. And go ahead and change false to true and then save it. So when you go back into here, you can load in the AVS script instead of the video file. And you, then you can proceed like normal. Also, just to let you guys know, I started the video encoding before I cut the uh, last section of the tutorial. Then I came back, I canceled it, I went into my configuration, and I changed my quality to 24 instead of 20. I told you 20 was way overkill. 20 is what I use for my YouTube videos, for all my video game uh, Let's Plays and tutorials. 
and I'm an obsessive quality freak. So you do not need 20. And I realized I didn't change that. So I went and changed it to 24. And that's going to make a huge difference on your file size. And you won't see the quality difference, especially on the touchpad. And the audio encoding just got done. So let's go look at these files now. What I have here is the video encode. This file came out to be 798 megabytes. And this is only the video file right now. So if we look at it, this is the uh, 1024 width re resolution. If you go look at it here, you'll see video. It's an MP4 with the H.264 codec, 1024 by three uh, by 432 pixels at 23.98 frames per second, and there is no audio here. And then vice versa, here is the audio encode. It's an M4A file, which is also an MP4. It's just named differently, so you know it's audio. It came out to be. looking for the file size just so you guys know how big it was 123 megabytes and this is a pretty long movie this is a two hour and 11 minute movie so now the final step that we need to take is to put these two together into a single file and this program has that built in as well so we're going to go to tools muxer what we're using for the touchpad is an mp4 so we're going to go to mp4 muxer for the video input we're going to go for the video encode here, for the audio input. We're going to grab the audio encode. We're going to queue this up and start it up. Pretty quick, as you can see. All right, that's finished and everything got done fine. And yeah, you can see this is where I aborted the original encoding. This is a great program because it can, you can queue up as many things as you want and let it batch encode while you're off at work or out doing something else. Another good reason why I really like this program. So here is our final program, our final file, 922 megabytes. It used to be over like seven gigabytes almost. So we reduced the size dramatically. It is now 100% compatible with the HT touchpad. And while I made this tutorial specifically for the HP touchpad because it seems to be very limited in what it will play, using the same tutorial will work for the iPad, the iPad 2, the Playbook, the Samsung tablet. Any tablet will play these videos. So let's go ahead and rename this to touchpad tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and stop recording this part where I'm on my computer and I'm going to get out my camcorder, show you guys how to transfer the movie onto your touchpad and then let you guys see it play. Okay guys, I'm back and it's time to finish up this tutorial. I'm going to be trying to handhold this camera so bear with me if it shakes and it's hard for me to do things with one hand. One real quick tech tip I want to share with you guys because I just realized I should teach you this. On your USB cable that comes with the product or if you're using a third party one, there's these little tiny spikes that sti uh, stick off of the micro USB. And this cable in particular, like my uh, Nokia N900 cable, has really large unnecessary spikes and they're very prone to damaging your USB port, either actually completely ripping the inside of the port out or damaging it internally. What I recommend you do is take some fine sandpaper, not super fine, not real rough, just a general fine grit sandpaper, and sand those down a little bit at a time until you get to the point where they're still there so the USB cable does not like just fall out of the unit, but you don't have to force it in or yank it out. And you're going to thank yourself for that later, especially if you're like me and you got the refurbished model that they sold on eBay just recently. So it has a pretty, pretty uh, crummy warranty. So you don't want to have the unit get damaged on you. All right. That aside, I've already got the other side of this plugged into the computer. 
and we need to plug it into the touchpad. I will need both hands for that, so I'm going to put down the camera for a second. Okay, okay, here we go. It's going to be really hard to film this glossy screen. So you plug it in, you're going to get the dialog. It says USB is connected. What do you want to do? USB drive is the option we want to choose. And that basically puts the device in a, a mass storage mode. You can just see the USB symbol on the screen. Going back to your PC. Again, I highly doubt you're going to be able to see this too great. But I have the uh, pop-up window that lets me know that my touchpad's plugged in. I'm just going to go to uh, open and Actually, I can go to the zoomed portion. There you go. Go to uh, open folder. And I created a new folder on here called videos right here I created that myself and this is where I drag and drop all my video files and we're gonna go to that completed file that we had just got done muxing that I named touchpad tutorial we're gonna drag it and drop it in to the video folder so now we got a 922 megabyte file that's transferring over Depending on how long that takes, I'll cut the video just a little bit to make that shorter so you don't have to wait on it. Basically, when it gets done with the transfer, make sure you always safely eject your device. And you do that if you're not sure how to do that. Go over, and I'm in Windows 7. It's going to be very similar but slightly different if you're on a different operating system. Go to here, find your safely eject USB device. Um, dialog in my case it's this one right here now when it's done transferring i just want to make sure that i eject the touchpad and it says that it's safe to eject so let's wait for that to finish and then i'll show you the video playing on the device okay guys here i am i'm uh behind the camera i got the camera on a tripod for this last part now we'll go ahead and exit out of my messaging and just swipe that away so what you want to do is go into your apps here and just go to the standard HP apps and you'll find the photo and video. And there is going to be somewhere at the bottom, you'll see it. There it goes, albums, it says videos right there. You, you can't read it at this angle, especially with the, the glossy reflection. But it says touchpad tutorial, 2 hours, 11 minutes, 35 seconds. I'm just going to click it. And the movie has started to play. Let me just turn off my monitor real quick. There we go. Alright. So here's one really, really important feature that the way we encoded this, not only does it play perfectly and look brilliant, but seeking totally works. Absolutely no issues going anywhere in the movie anytime you'd like. Because we did the uh, dynamic range compression, you can hear everybody talk nice and easy, no problems with that. Everything's just perfectly customized just for this particular instance. So, yes, a long tutorial, as most of my tutorials are, but that's because I'm the guy who goes way into, you know, details, breaks it down to the basics so it's easy to understand, and make sure that you learn something. So, I hope you guys found the tutorial useful. If you liked the material, give me a thumbs up to say thanks. And this was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.